Biometric Design recently updated Resolve to Resolve 16.2, and at the same time they've also updated Fusion to Fusion 16.2. And even though in the release notes they listed a bunch of changes for Resolve 16.2, they didn't really mention much to do with Fusion other than the new Fusion generators and transitions. That kind of has more to do with the Edit tab than the Fusion tab. But if you look at the release notes for Fusion 16.2, those changes they made there also seem to be in the version of Fusion that's in Resolve, that's built in. So in this video, I'm going to go over those changes and demonstrate them for you here real quick. So one of the first changes that you can see here is under the Effects Library, under the Fusion tab, you'll see a new menu item here called Edit Templates. And this is where all your templates are for the new Fusion Generators and Fusion Transitions, and also the existing Fusion Titles that are on the Edit Page menu. So you click here, you can see the ones, and these are ones I've also made, which I have demonstrated in my previous video on the new Fusion Transitions. But also they have under the three dots menu here, you click on that and click Show Folder, it'll open up the folder where your transitions are here. That way you could edit them or add new ones or do whatever you want with them, but that's just a quick way to get to that those folders. Second thing they added and changed within Fusion is now within, again, within the effects library, you can now click on macros and list all your different macros here that you've created within Fusion. You used to be able to get to it from right-clicking and add tool, and then under here you get to macros, and now they actually have it within the effects library menu up here. So that was the second change they made in Fusion in Resolve 16.2. The next pretty big change they made was if you add, say, a background or anything that you need a mask with, if you click on mask, say rectangle mask here, I'll put that in the first viewer here, you'll see new items under inspector, different parameters you could change. One is the border style. Now, by default, if you change this, nothing's going to happen because it doesn't have a border. By default, the border width is zero. But if you do add a border to it, which I will do here, then you could change the border style. So you could have it rounded corners. You could have it kind of cut off here. Call that bevel and then round. And then you could do miter. Now to see even more changes here, any more parameters, if you unclick solid, you then get ability to change the length, which is something you sort of kind of did with the um, with a paint node, if you create a triangle, you could have a start and end to it, but now you can just do it by length. So you come over here and change the length, and then that changes the rectangle from solid here, or complete rectangle, and then you could change the length of it. And you can also animate that. And you can also change the, what's called the end cap. That's these other three here. So you can have a flat end cap, you have a rounded end cap, and then you can have a square end cap. And again, you can change the position and have that animate around, which is something you used to have to do the paint with a paint node. But now you can do that just with a rectangle and a rectangle mask and a background. Now they've also made changes to the other masks. So if you do a ellipse here, put that in the first window and click on that. By default, you really don't notice anything different, but if you add a border and then uncheck solid, you now have that same thing. You have a cap style and position and length. So again, I could change the length, and this is animatable through keyframes. I could change the position of that, and I could also change the end cap. So right now, if you look at the end cap, it's rounded. I could change that to flat, or I could change that to square. And then also, if you do polygon mask, let's do that in one here. Now I'll draw a polygon here. Come over here, you see the same thing, you see the border style. So if I increase the border width here, you see right now it's rounded. But I could also have that be bevel, 
or what's called miter, two different miter ones here. And if you change the miter limit, you see it'll, it'll cut them off the points here. And you can have that happen. And again, you can go rounded and then click solid. Check that. Then you get the cap ends again. So you can change the length. So this is animatable. So now I have the cap end cap is set to round now. You do it flat or you do it square, just like with the other two masks. And again, I can animate the position and have that go around. That's another nice way to do some uh, motion graphics. And kind of the last change that they made I'm going to show is they changed the, added a separate setting for the keyframe structure. So if I control space and type in keyframe structure here and add that. See they have source start, source end, stretch start and stretch end, and stretch edges instead. Now they've added inverted timing. Now I've played with it a little bit. I'm not really seeing uh, what use it is and how you should use it, but I'm sure when they release the 16.2 manual, they'll have a section on how to use this. So then I'll create an updated video that kind of explains it more and how it ties in with everything else. But those are the changes they've made inside of Fusion in Resolve 16.2. These changes also uh, were done in the standalone version of Fusion 16.2. But hopefully you found this useful, and I thank you for watching.